Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Leon. Today we're going to be talking about Gigabyte's Z170X Gaming 7 motherboard. Now, just off the bat, you guys can actually see it looks a little bit different from what you guys have seen from our motherboards in the sense that it has a Heroes of the Storm uh, graphic as well as the name and a Blizzard logo right there. So this tells you guys this is definitely going to be a great board to talk about. Um, we're going to go over the board as well as some of its cool features. And also, we will also be uh, talking about, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the box as well. So, uh, of course, this is our Heroes of the Storm Limited Edition uh, Gaming 7 board. And it is an LGA 1151 socket. It supports DDR4, USB Type-C, as well as it does have USB 3.1. So this is the next standard in USB technology. And this is using a Z170 chipset. This is the new Skylake platform. Okay, so let's swing it around to the back and we'll get a better look at what features it has. And we'll show you what you get when you open the box up. Okay, so right off the bat, you see that we're talking about Intel USB 3.1. Now, Gigabyte is actually one of the only manufacturers to exclusively use the Intel chip uh, an Intel controller to actually power our USB 3.1. So we have that 32 gigabit bandwidth uh, to support USB 3.1 even though that the limitations are about 10 gigabits. We also have uh, the world's next universal connector which is the Type-C connector. It has our Gigabyte exclusive amp up audio technology with a Soundcore 3D, this quad core audio chip from Creative. Now Gigabyte is actually one of the first and only manufacturers to incorporate a quad core audio chip onto our boards. And we also support uh, a gaming NIC as well as an Intel NIC. So it has a dual NIC design. Now with gamers, all of you guys are interested in, uh, in network performance as well as audio quality. So we've already covered the bases there. And moving down, we have different features such as our uh, op amp, upgradable op amp, our Nichicon capacitors, uh, our fine gold capacitors, as well as our LED trace path with multicolors this time around, and dual DAC up USB ports, and of course 10K caps, dual Gen 3 by 4 M.2s, a turbo B clock, and metal shielding. And all of these we'll cover in a short while right after we go over what's inside the box. So let's open it up and we can see what you guys get when you guys buy one of these bad boys. All right. So out of the box you can actually see the board is wrapped in ESD uh, packaging. And right here we'll just put this off to the side for right now. And you guys can open this up. Very good looking board right there. And under this we actually have some exclusive features. When you guys are buying a limited edition Heroes of the Storm board, there's actually different items in here, so we actually do have a hanger. If you guys are interested in finding more, uh, finding out more about our Heroes of the Storm promotion, definitely click on the link below or click right here. We're going to put some links in here for you to reference to, and you can get more information about it as well. We also include a flyer here. That will actually give you some more information on uh, how you can participate in it. You'll get a multilingual installation guide, as well as your owner's manual, and your driver discs. So with all of those other paraphernalia aside, we also, let's get to the cool stuff. We have a rear I.O. This is a padded rear I.O. backplate with some cables on it, and we'll talk about what those are for in a bit. We have an SLI bridge connector, some plugs, this is plugs display ports, uh, your HDMI's uh, just so you, get dust, uh, you don't get dust in it to help protect your system, a cool sticker for your case just to show off to your friends when you're at any LAN events. You get four SATA connectors, uh, these, are, these look like they're protective with some shielding uh, on it and you're included with uh, right angle clips as well as your straight clips and also a G connector. Now this G connector allows for easier installation when you're actually installing your PC. So let's get to the board and we'll talk about some of these accessories in a bit. Alright guys, so let's break it down onto the board. Um, we'll go over the board and then we'll talk about the rear I.O. Um, if you guys do have any feedback that you guys want to share with us, definitely reach out to our Facebook page. You can find out more information on gigabyte.com. 
Uh, so let's get down into the board. So right off the bat, you can actually see some connectors here. There's a four pin connector for your rear IO. Now you guys might have seen this previously with our X99, where we actually had a backlit IO on a, with that's padded, which is very nice. It gives you a premium feel. It's backlit. Instead, now we actually have four connectors off of it, and you can actually see there's the red, the blue, the green, and then a black for your ground, and this connects right here. Now, the reason for the additional two pins now is that the back I.O. now supports uh, multi-colors. So just like how your noise guard or your trace path now has multi-colors, you can actually select colors uh, uh, for your system and the back I.O. will copy whatever color is inside the system. And this, of course, can still beat to the sound of your music. It can still pulse on and off or you can have it on continuously or shut off completely. Okay, so that's one of the cool functions that you'll find in the Z170 series. Uh, we also have next to it pin, header, uh, pin headers for system fans. These are of course PWMs, so you can actually control it through the BIOS or you can even control it into our systems information viewer on the App Center. So if you guys are interested, that's a cool tool and we'll probably show it in another video for you guys to show you how to use our App Center. Next to it we have an 8-pin power, ATX power. And then we have these cool heat sinks here. We have additional CPU fan pin headers in the white. And right below it, we have another pin header for an optional fan support. If you guys, uh, right now, it's very popular for users to actually install closed loop liquid cool setups or anything that needs water cooling and you need continuous power to your pump, this is probably the one that you want to use because you can actually choose to have it running 100% of the time. Okay, we have some testing buttons here for if you're testing the system on a bench before you install it into your case. You have a power button, you have your reset switch, you have a clear CMOS just in case you run into any issues you want to start all over. Right here you have a debug LED just so you know what's wrong with your system. Maybe you didn't install the RAM right, maybe the CPU isn't seated properly. We have an eco mode button so you can actually save some power and go eco-friendly. We also have an OC button which allows you to do a quick overclock. So again if you guys aren't familiar with overclocking you can always uh, use this button. You can use our EasyTune software or anything in our App Center. Uh, there's a lot of great guides out there so definitely check that out. Uh, speaking of which, this board is using a DDR4 and we're using a single connector to actually lock it in so you can actually uh, have more ease and convenience when removing or installing your DDR4. And then like we mentioned earlier, this is an LJ1151 socket. All right. Moving down, we have your standard 24 pin ATX power. We have our USB 3.0 headers, two of them might I add, so that equates to about four USBs on the front panel. We have another system fan header. And then right here, of course, we have our SATA connections. And with our, the Z170 platform with Skylake, you're actually able to achieve three native SATA Express connectors. So before previously with the Z97, we were limited because of the chipset support. Now you're able to actually get 16 gigabit throughput from your SATA Express. So that's 16 gigabits right there. And then you have your front panel pin header. And earlier we mentioned we had a cool device or accessory for you guys to use. And this is actually what we like to call the G connector. Now, you guys might have seen this from other boards or uh, previously in other builds, but this one's a little bit unique where it actually locks in your front panel pin headers, so when you actually install it, you can actually remove it just as easily because it holds on to the pin headers rather than just letting it slide in. Uh, one of the other features is it's because we're not putting pins inside. It's actually accepting those pin headers. You actually get a lower Z height as well. So if you have a longer graphics card that might protrude out here, it's actually not going to block you from that. So you're safe. So that's one of the cool features that we have with this board as well. A little bit over, we have another fan connector. So, of course, uh, more fans, the better keeps your system cool. We have another switch right here, a uh, dip switch that allows you to actually disable or enable your single BIOS uh, or dual BIOS functionality. If you're choosing to do any overclocking, you might not want your dual BIOS, your secondary BIOS, to overwrite your main BIOS. Uh, this is something you want to enable to prevent any malfunctions or any overwriting to make uh, your work you have to redo what you've done already. <clears throat> okay, moving over, we have an additional two more USB 2.0 headers. 
we have a TPM pin header, and the TPM stands for a trusted platform module. Now this is mainly for security, so if any of you guys want a secure system, you guys can go look up Wikipedia, you know, TPM, see what it can do for you. And it's not something that we usually see regular consumers using. Moving over, we have another set of headers, and this would be for your COM port. Um, so this is a COM port header, which gives you connectivity for other I.O. devices. So if you want to uh, connect anything on the side, uh, this is something that we don't always see users using, but it's something that they've asked for. So definitely something useful for those guys as well. And then gain switches right here. So if you're using headphones that need more power or output, this gain switch allows you to switch between 2.5 to 6x. And of course, an upgradable op amp, which you've seen with Gigabyte's amp up, exclusive amp up audio technology. And your front panel audio headers here. And then right here, this is where we separate our digital from our analog. So you can actually see there's a noise guard uh, trace path lighting here. And of course, like we mentioned earlier, this is going to be multicolor now. You can actually choose within the BIOS or even our app center to choose what color you want. And it has the different functionalities of actually beating to your music or actually pulsing on and off. Um, <clears throat> On this board, we've incorporated Creative Soundcore 3D chip. Now, of course, Gigabyte is one of the first and only manufacturers to actually include a quad-core audio chip onto their board. And we know that gamers like to have good networking as well as great audio performance and an experience that when you guys are playing games, you guys can hear the sounds of your enemies or the sound effects in movies or anything that you guys listen to. So this is definitely a plus for you guys. And all of these here, we do have the different the audio capacitors, uh, Nichicon uh, fine gold capacitors, and and that is one of that's all. Of this is part of our audio amp up audio technology. Okay, and right here, you guys might have noticed uh, while we're, we've been talking about all the different features around the board, we do have uh, something different on the PCI Express slot. Now this metal piece that you see is actually our one piece stainless steel metal shielding. Now this metal shielding actually helps you in multiple ways. It actually helps you in the fact that it prevents any damage to the PCI slot during shipment or uh, when you guys are installing heavy graphics cards. So it's not as easy to be ripped out of the PCB. Another feature that it also helps with is it's actually all grounded and at various points, might I add. So it prevents from any possible ESD or any EMI interference that you guys might experience when putting high-end graphics cards into your system. And then we also have dual M.2s on this board. And of course, they're all running at 32 gigabits per second. Uh, that's one of the benefits of going to Skylake. We do have an updated DMI, which gives you that larger bandwidth. And if you want to be using the next generation form factor and VMEs, uh, you can definitely use these to go into a RAID mode and you can RAID both of those to have better performance overall. We also have a Turbo B clock. So, and this chip is actually very good for those of you guys that want to customize your system, get more, more performance out of your CPU when you are doing overclocking. Traditionally, systems were uh, locked in at uh, three straps which were 100, 125, and 167, and you were only able to move within the 5% ranges of these straps. Now with the Turbo B clock, you're actually unlimited to the range between 90 to 200. So if users wanted to go at 90 megahertz base clocks or even 140, they're able to do so now with this chip. Okay. And with that being said, our M.2 is a socket 3, I forgot to mention that earlier, and it is a M key, and we do support the 42, 60, or 80 length, millimeter, millimeter lengths as well. <coughs> All right, so let's move over to the rear I.O. so you guys can get a better look and we can talk about the different features that you guys might have on this rear I.O. <coughs> Starting from the top, we have our USB DAC up. Now with our USB DAC up, it allows you to have better uh, audio quality if you have an externally powered DAC because it has its own power grid. So you have two of these and the power can actually be controlled within your BIOS to actually turn on or turn off. <coughs> you also have your traditional PS2. And then we have our HDMI as well as our display port. So if you guys are interested in doing any video off of the iGPU, this is definitely something that'll be good for you. <coughs> two USB 3.0 ports, and then a Type-C port right here. 
So this Type-C port is what we mentioned earlier. This will be the next universal connector for all of you guys out there. It's good for 3.1. It has uh, different protocols that allow for data, video, audio, uh, transfer between that. And because we want to future-proof you guys, but we know it might not start right away, we've also included a USB uh, standard A. So this standard A connector is actually in USB 3.1 but you're able to use your traditional USB 3.0s or 2.0s to connect to it. We also have an, another additional USB 3.0 and then two NICs, one being Killer and one being Intel for those of you guys that favor one or the other. And then of course we have the gold plating audio and this allows you to have better audio uh, signaling as well as preventing any corrosion or any tarnishing like that. So this basically wraps it up for our Gaming 7. If you guys have any other questions, definitely check out our site, gigabyte.com, and you guys can click the link below. We'll have more information for the Heart Heroes of the Storm uh, and how to join in on our sweepstakes.